Hi, I'm Mark Lowell and welcome to Photo 20 for you. And today I'm looking at the Elinchrom D-Lite RX1 kit. Uh, we're looking at the specific uh, softbox kit, in fact, really. The kit comes in two main bags. Uh, the first bag will incorporate the two stands. Uh, I've already put one up, as you can see here, but the other stand is obviously in the bag. Um, and then basically just using the little clip switches that we have here will extend the legs out to begin with for stability and then obviously the other clips will just push out and then fall back to give the height to the stand. In the other bag uh, it carries the D lights themselves and what we have here is the small little one light and this is absolutely brilliant for the kind of the new to flash photographer, for the photographer who needs to work with wide apertures hence you need less power. Um, but basically the one light is designed as a entry level as well as an uh, addition to the Elinchrom range to add into their professional kind of quality and it's all to do with the amount of power that we can get out from this light itself. So once we've got the head on the stand uh, the next thing would be to obviously power up and that just comes with a simple power cable and then the power cable just slots into the back of the one. The next thing will be is to uh, assemble the softbox together. Now remember you get two in the kit themselves. The caps are just then restored back into the bag. Also in the bag that you're not going to see is a sink cable in fact. That would um, just slot into the back of the sink port here and if uh, you wanted to connect directly to your camera then you could use using the sink cord. However we're going to be using the sky port that comes with the kit so I can fire the flash from the camera hot shoe itself as well as being able to control the power but I'll talk about that a little bit more depth in a minute. So basically within the bag that's what we've got. Once we've uh, got the two pieces that we need out for the soft the soft box one is going to be the ring which uh, fits onto the front of the one light itself and then inside the soft box bag we have the four metal rods and then we have the structure of the soft softbox itself and as you see we also have the diffusion material. So the first thing is to insert the one rod into the end and then insert it into the collar. Next one is to insert the opposite direction so again just pop it in the pocket, putting it into the collar and allowing that to snap into place. Then once we've got the tension into the soft softbox it's basically continuing that around putting in the final two rods. And there we go, that's our soft softbox together. Then it's going to fit just onto the collar. You're going to notice on the top of the D-Lite RX1, uh, just like with all the other Elinchrom heads, there's the locking switch. So when it's down, it's locked, and when it's up, it's open. So then we're just going to feed in the softbox, and then we just click it in position. Finally then, just to complete the set, we just put the diffusion material on. Best to do the two, two top corners then just do the bot bottom one. That will bring some tension to the material. And then we're ready to use. Quick as that. Let's just talk about the uh, back a little bit. So just pressing the power switch on and then it just takes about a second or so to come to life as it senses the voltage uh, that it's going to be using and then it's then set. A couple of little things just looking on the back of the head then. We've got the up and down power. These work in tenths of an f-stop. We're going to be using a meter today to accurately meter our exposures. Um, but if you're having to use the, uh, a grey card or the histogram on the back of the camera, of course, uh, you're going to be basically up and down in the power to kind of work with your correct exposure. Then we have the tone. If we didn't want the tone to make the noise as we fire the flash, then we could just switch that off. Uh, it's always a good idea, at least on your key light, to keep the tone switched on. Uh, why? Well, it's good to know that your main light is fired. It's a kind of guaranteed exposure. So uh, the next one at the top here, we have the open flash. This is the kind of the test button or what will fire the flash. And if we've been uh, pushing the power up and down, it's also a way to qu uh, quickly release any uh, excess power that it might have as you've kind of been lowering things down. Then we come to the modeling lamp and basically four settings there. Uh, if we can press it once to begin with, now you'll see it's on full power. If we press it again, it's now in the off position. If we press it once more, we get into the proportional mode. This will be proportional depending on the power that you have your uh, flash set to. 
and then once more, if we press it, you can see it's based on the minimum power. So those are kind of the key things. Um, for me, again, I like to set it into the groups. Uh, there's lots of menus behind these. It's worth checking out the manual no matter what. Uh, the key thing for me will be the groups. Um, if I'm going to be using the key light on group one and then my accent light or hair light on group two, it's good to actually kind of change those. So to change the groups, I just press the two buttons together. Then I press the modeling bulb uh, mode and that goes into group. And then as this one's already set onto group one, I don't need to change that. But if I wanted to change it to group two, I've just pressed the up arrow and it just goes from there. So worth checking out the manual. The last part of the kit, of course, is the sky port. And the sky port allows us to fire the flash from camera position. Uh, this has uh, the different settings. I just mentioned the group uh, be part before. And uh, what I mean by that is if we switch it from off to the first notch down, which is group, um, this would then only fire at this point group one within the scene or group two and so on or we can push it down to press into the all. Now um, on the test button here we it allows us to set it into a speed mode. So all we need to do here is first of all press and hold it for 10 seconds and then we're going to find ourselves with either a single blip which is now into normal mode or if we press and held that again for another 10 seconds it would then give us the double blip and at that point it's now into the speed mode. So because we're in uh, high speed mode on here now, if I press the test button, nothing fires. So I have to now put these heads into the high speed mode and that is just pressing the two buttons again and pressing the R1 to R2. R0 is uh, radio off, R1 is in normal sync mode and R2 basically puts it into the high speed mode and now this, this head would fire but the other one won't because I haven't set that of course. So understanding the basic functionality of the light is absolutely imperative otherwise of course you're going to find yourself perhaps rushing at some stage, adjusting some of the buttons and not allowing the flash to fire. So that's enough about the lighting, let's see how we use it in the studio to really get great results. So the first thing I've got to do before I start to take a photograph is measure my lighting. Now, the first thing for me to do is make use of the Ellenchrom group facility that they give me. So I'm just sliding my sky port into group and then I'm sliding the first part into one. Why? Because my key light, this is my light on, which is going to light our model and that is the main light source. We often call that the key light. Um, now when I fire, it only fires the one light. It's not going to fire the other one. So I've basically got this on group two, the key light on group one, and both have their magic eyes switched off, or the photo sensor cell, that's, that's what it is. So the first thing is metering from where the subject is going to be towards the light source, and then gives me my reading. So that's giving me f5.6. If it was not enough, I'd need to increase it in power. If it, if it was too much, I'd have to decrease it in power. Now, what aperture you decide to shoot at is a personal thing. Um, I tend to shoot in the kind of classic way that we're going to be setting up initially, around about the 5.6 5 or even f4. I'm going to keep to the 5.6 because that's what we're on. And because I'm working in the classical setup to begin with, what I've got here is I'm going to meter to get this background light to be one stop below. So because I'm working at 5.6 with this studio flash, I need to get f4 coming out of this flash. So now I move it into group two and I point my meter towards the light source. And now just this light fires, of course. That's given me 3.6, so not quite enough. Again, using one of the fantastic Ellenchrom facilities, I can now press the uh, plus button on the sky, the sky port, which will now increase the power just to that one light. The audio beep says, yes, I've done what you've asked me to do. You're ready to fire. So let's meter that again. And that's given me 4.5 now, so I've gone too much. So let's press it in a minus. One, two, three. It's done a third of a stop. F4, F4. So now that I've gained my F4 for my hair light, I'm ready to shoot. Okay, darling, straight at me again. A little lean with the hair just onto this side a little bit, turn the nose around towards here just a touch. It's gorgeous there, let's do it. And again, there you go, it's cool just there, let's do it. So, as you can see from this shot, it's the classic um, 45 degree lit uh, with a uh, hair light. Now what we talk about 45 degree is the position of the light uh, in its position relative to a circle on the floor. So the first thing that we're doing here, because I've got it in 45 degrees, this classical position, you're going to find there's a sudden fall off on the shadow part just on the opposite side of the cheek. Now we can relieve that in several ways. We can use a fill light, we'll talk about that soon. We could use a reflector, but the key point is to begin with to understand what every light is doing within the scene. 
Now, because we've got a beautiful, slim-looking model today, I can get away with more of a flat lighting. Now, what I mean by flat, it means that the light would come closer towards camera position. If I want a little bit more dra a drama to the scene, as I've already said, we move it away from 45. So the classic 45 degree is cool to begin with. So let's do that same shot again. So that's straight at me, darling. That's beautiful just there. Let's flatten that off now just a little bit by bringing the light around towards camera position. I'll just leave it there for a minute and just do that same shot. And you can see now how the light has become more flattened on the face and we start to open up the shadow side of the face as well, which is obviously key if you're working with the amount of minimum light, light in. Um, but the whole point is, as soon as you start to bring that light around towards camera position, to around the, the zero position, you're going to fatten the client. That's absolutely key to remem remember because then the light starts to illuminate the shadow side, of course. Turn the head more, around more, more, more. Around towards your left more. That's gorgeous there. Keep, keep it. One second. Keep it. Relax. So in this next setup, uh, we've kept to our kind of classic look. So in other words, our key light, uh, even though still at 45 degrees, because the subject's facial position has moved, the light has to actually move itself. So in other words, we moved it from here to a quite dramatic, 135 degree position if she was still looking in the same place as the original photograph but now because we're looking into the pro uh, the profile the light has moved we've still kept the lighting onto this side why well we've kept it there to add that extra separation but again remember remember this is breaking the classics that's absolutely key to remember each time once you oppose the opposite side of where your key light is coming from with light we do break that classic kind of rule so let's change it quite dramatically now. Let's go for a, a split light on both sides. Um, we're going to shoot two different shots, um, but in fact, I'm not going to switch any of the lights off. We're just going to use the group facility to be able to kind of control the lighting. So once more, we're metering the light source. Uh, it's given me 6.3 onto this side because obviously it's coming a little bit closer now. I could either reduce the amount of power down to match what we were on to work with our aperture. Um, again, let's see what the other light is doing first. So let's uh, switch this now onto group two to make the light to my left-hand side fire. And that's giving me 5.6, 5.6. So I've got two trains of thought here, either increase the amount of power here or decrease the amount of power there. What I want to do is decrease the amount of power here. Why? Because otherwise, um, if there were other lights in the equ equation, I know we're only using two lights today, but it would complicate the whole setup with it. So I'm going back to group one. At this point, I'm going to just press the uh, guide port three times. One, two, three. It's going to give me an audio control then to say that it's done it. re, -me -re -me once more, and we're back to the five, six. At this point, just putting my sky port back onto the hot shoe of the camera. Again, darling, hands on hips and just looking towards the side. That's great. Just there. Let's do it. Uh, this, this time, you're just going to look through here. That's cool. Just there as you do it. So you can see now what, what we've got is just that one light. Um, that's because we've got the group one still on. If I'd switched it to all of the groups, then obviously this light would have fired as well. The benefit of using the likes of the sky port and separating your lights into different groups allows you to get more and more creative with your photographs without a real amount of work with it. So if I just switch it on to all now, let's just see the same shot, but just with both of the lights. And now you start, start to see how it lights up. We've got a bit of a problem and we've created the problem ourselves. What have we done? Well, we've given ourselves an opposite reaction to the light. So in other words, we've got one light coming in from here and that's going to light one part of the image. And then we've got another light at exactly the same, same power in the same amount of inten intensity of light reflecting off, off the skin. But if we look between the two lights, what we have is a black line, and we often refer to that as hatchet, because it's almost like you've split the, sub the subject down the middle. If I, if I get her to just look towards me, Sarah, if you just look towards me, darling, lower the chin more for me. That's go it's gorgeous there. Um, and now we can see what I mean. There's this almost black line coming through uh, the face, which is not complementary whatsoever that's absolutely key to make sure you've got control this is great if we're doing perhaps a rugby player or a sports guy and you want to have all that kind of physical muscle tone and so on that's a different style of photograph of course but when we're trying to create a beautiful a portrait keep to the classics all i need to do there is just move that light onto the side 
And if she's going to look at me, I'd move that to the, four, uh, the 45, of course. Darling, just going to look off towards here again. Just look off towards the side. More, more, more for me. That's gorgeous there. That's lovely. And instantly, you've controlled your shot. That's absolutely key for us when we're using light is control the light. Understand what it's going to do onto the, sub, the subject before you even take the photograph, and you'll guarantee the effect. So for the next setup, I'm going to move away from both of the lights having their soft boxes on. Let me just switch that off for a minute. I'm just going to remove the soft box. This stage, uh, it's just going to point towards my background. It's going to be behind the model. So I'm just going to light it. Now, because I've got a very intense uh, black velvet background here, that's going to absorb a lot of light. And unless you've got a meter, things like this are going to be a little bit more complicated to look at. In other words, you're going to have to do some testing on the back of the camera. Of the camera. I'm just going to move this up in power to 2.2. So I've got some relief. And what I'm looking to do is have a little bit of a halation uh, on the black and still going out to this beautiful vig uh, vignette. Ha happier. Turn the head more. Turn the body to me a touch. That's where it's there. One more. Let's do it. Keep it. So as you can see from that shot, it gives us this lovely subtle gradation to really separate the subject away from the background. Now again, if I just show you another shot as well without the background light on, as you can see here when we compare the two, you'll see the big difference between using a background light and not using a background light. And for me, I always want to make the subject look three-dimensional. And that's the great thing of being able to use two lights, of course. Let's just bring a little bit of colour in towards the scene. We're going to keep the light on the same intensity. Um, and this is something that I want you to be aware of because obviously now that we don't have the absorbency of that black material, that background is going to come quite light in the middle. So this is where you need to get into the habit of rechecking how much bright your background is going to be, especially if you're going to turn an image into the likes of black and white. So let's see the same shot in colour first of all. Turn the head this way, darling. That's gorgeous there. And you can see the intensity now gives us this halation right behind the body and then grad uh, graduates out towards the side. Let's do the same shot in monochrome. I'm just going to turn the camera settings into uh, a black and white look. Straight at me, darling. That's lovely. Uh, I want to drastically reduce that. So um, I'm going to move this down now from 2.6 down to 1.3 and this is the real benefit of you of using the likes of the one light is working with little power that's absolutely key so let's do the same shot now just metering that light down just to uh, give us that same look turn the body around towards me darling that's beautiful this there and now you can see even though the background is lit it has a much more controlled effect with it so I hope you enjoyed that short film using the Elinchrom D-Lite RX1. Uh, the key thing as a photographer, of course, I always want to take control of the aperture or shutter speed. And obviously, when we're using flash, shutter speed really doesn't come into the equation. So as far as the aperture is concerned, that's going to give me my creativity. And even though I've kind of just played safe on the 5.6 on a medium zoom lens here today, what well, I've demonstrated to you that pretty much you can create anything if you think about where you're going to position your lights with this Elinchrom D-Lite RX1 kit. Key point, remember, we're using the soft boxes here, but remember, they can come off. And even though I've used them with the diffusion panels on the whole time, you can take off the diffusion panel to create a totally different look to the photograph. Check out one of the other films where we're going to be using the umbrella style of kit, or we're going to be using the accessories to really dramatically change the photographs. So I'm Mark Cleghorn. See you next time. Bye-bye.